Hey everybody, I want to do a quick little thing today about a old project. So here it is. I'm going to talk about this 1998 Bare Naked Ladies concert opening. One, two, three, two, three, two. I was reminded of this recently, uh, and I thought it would be a fun thing to go over and talk about. So the story behind this is I was working at the Ink Tank at the time, and uh, we got a call from Network Records, which is a Canadian record label. Uh, at the time, the Canadian rock combo, the Bare Naked Ladies, were having uh, their first breakthrough American success, and they wanted us to do a animated opener for their world tour we had about 10 days to do this which is not a lot of time so what we decided to do was use photo cutouts and we based this on the album cover uh, so Machak Albrecht directed and designed this and um, so sort of the production was from what I recall I don't have a lot of documentation on this so might be completely inaccurate uh, we did the Machuk did all the animation right? he shot it under camera as cutouts in his studio on Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg Brooklyn uh, what is now the Apple store uh, his studio was upstairs I think it's a real estate office or something now but um, so he had a 35 millimeter animation stand hooked up with a video tap and everything. So his video tap was also installed upside down. So his uh, video feed, his tap, would uh, be upside down. Uh, I did suggest that he just flip the TV monitor over, but I don't know if that ever happened. So anyway, these are all photo cutouts, right? Uh, there's a... So what we did was fabricate all the stuff on paper, cut it out from, you know, just print it, cut it out, mount it on foam core, um, mount it on cardboard, what is it called, pa poster board, and, um, and edge it. You know, you can see like the, you know, do a little black edge on the side there with a pencil. Um, so yeah, this is all traditional under camera, and uh, you, know, you see a um, homage to Monty Python, as Cutout always has. Um, we probably had, let's see, maybe four people working on this. Um, it was me, which I did nothing. Oh, no more people than that. So it was me uh, doing nothing. I'm pretty sure Alex Freshenoff did some work on it. I know Matthew Salata did. Pretty sure Megan Whitmarsh did. They were doing cutting the stuff out and pasting it. Um, Machuk's wife, Ellie Albrecht, who's a fantastic artist. Um, I don't think we had an intern on this. So one of the reasons why we thought of doing working with Machuk on this is because we'd been doing a bunch of stuff with him at the Ink Tank already. Uh, he directed some Troubles the Cats for um, uh, Cartoon Network and Children's Selfish Workshop. The first thing I ever animated on was a thing that he did also for CTW, Zoom to the Zoo, and, and a bunch of things for HBO, Home Box Office. Um, one of which was painted cutouts called Manasha's Dream, which was beautiful. So um, this was all done in his place, in about, as I said, in about 10 weeks. Um, so we would cut out all these little pieces in various sizes, and uh, he would be under camera shooting um, in the little back room. Uh, he, <laughs> at one point, so I was always really, uh, I was a little stressed out all the time back then uh, so I was stressed out on the schedule because also when you're shooting film you have to factor in a lab day uh, and then a transfer and then you do your video edit from that and then you would have to do a conform so also in addition to the people that I previously mentioned um, Dave Quarter 
was editing this and we were editing this on Avid at the Ink Tank. So the production was happening in Machek's place in Brooklyn. Post production, etc., was at the Ink Tank. Business was at the Ink Tank. So um, it was supposed to be like a minute or something, 90 seconds tops. I think the budget was probably like ten or fifteen thousand dollars. I don't really remember off the top of my head, which is not a lot of money, obviously. Uh, it could have been twenty-five because they did have more. Mo- it was probably twenty-five, to be honest. But now that I think about it, um, I wasn't. It wasn't my money, so I didn't really pay too much attention to that. Um, yeah, I think it was twenty-five. Um, which, if you got twenty-five thousand for this today, you'd be in pretty good shape. So it was supposed to be about 90 seconds. I recall at one point Macha coming out from under camera saying, I am making a three-minute film. And I was like, oh, man, Macha, come on. It's only supposed to be 90 seconds, and it's due, uh, it's due in like two days. Um, so um, he did you know, make something which is probably about three and a half minutes, so we wound up doing a lot of work in edit. Uh, so when you're animating under camera as this is, as he says, some things come out and some things take a little longer and you experiment and you play around. So in this, we based this little character on the cover art for their album and then just kind of built this whole little you know, kung fu scenario. Um, here's a part where you see it goes to silhouette and uh, it goes to silhouette there because we uh, lost one of the hands for one of the guys, so we only had like two left hands. Um, so when it goes to silhouette, you can't see that they're actually using the same hand. Uh, that was Machik's a brilliant guy. It's just a, something that he came up with under camera. You can also see there's a little bit of this kind of multiplane thing going on, and the racking focus, all done in camera. So, you know, he had a plate. Uh, this was a homemade kind of multiplane. So he had this plate glass. That's what the animation would be on. And then he had a um, level below that, maybe like six inches below uh, for backgrounds and whatnot. And, you know, this is all pretty simple and pretty easy. Um, you know, we're playing a lot with graphics here, uh, with the graphics in the animation. Uh, Yeah, this is really like a lot of Machek just experimenting and playing around and figuring things out. Uh, you know, we do this little good, bad, and the ugly homage. This one is has to do, I guess, and it's animation law that you have to do good, bad, and the ugly homage. Uh, so we did get this finished. Um, so it was shot on film, transferred to Beta SP, and we edited it on in Avid. Um, AVR 77, I think was the max at the time. Um, NTSC 1920 by 480. So it's inherently kind of low quality. Uh, and then output. We didn't even do a, a timed color correction of the video transfer, the film to tape transfer. No time, no money to do that. Uh, we did you know, a one light transfer at the um, lab where we just had the lab guy set the settings. But, you know, Dave was, uh, the editor, was really learning these tools and getting pretty good at it. Uh, so he did this color grading in the Avid. We decided to make it black and white to hide a lot of issues. And I think that was a good choice. So doing this type of work, usually... Um, a cartoon animator does about, if you're lucky, 15 seconds a week of animation. For this, uh, Machek was having to do maybe like 15 seconds a day, 30 seconds a day, um, lighting, setting up, all that, just as we were building and fabricating these things um, in his studio. Uh, So, yeah, we finished this thing off, and this is the story that I made me remember it. Um, we finished the thing, and the band was kicking off their tour at Madison Square Garden here in New York. And, um, you know, it was a Friday or something. I'll probably look up the dates, but I believe it was a Friday. And um, 
So I have this tape, and I have to get them this tape. And they had also promised that we would get tickets to the show because you al- you're always promised f- these sorts of free things, and those things are rarely delivered on. But uh, So we're supposed to get some free tickets. And I take it to the stage door, and I'm going with Alex Reshinoff and Matthew Salata. I think that was I think it was just the three of us. And um, we go to the backstage door, and I have this tape. And the you know the guards back there. I'm like, yeah, we're supposed to do this, blah blah blah. He has no idea what I'm talking about. We're not on the list. And I'm like, no, we can't. They can't do the show without this tape. So eventually, like I, you know, if you wear a tie and a jacket, like you can get away with all sorts of stuff, and people believe you. So this is one of those cases where if you look authoritative, like people also don't care. Like this guard, he doesn't care. He's like looking at me. I'm wearing a tie. I've got a tape. I'm speaking with polysyllabic words he's like fine just get out of my hair give it to whomever um it goes along the way but we don't have tickets so i'm still i kind of like do you know who i am i kind of like do you know who i am me into the uh the front of the stage before the show because you want to see your thing you know you've got like Twenty thousand. I don't know how many people were in there. It was the Madison Square Garden Theater. It wasn't MSG proper, but it was still a big arena, a thousand, two thousand people. Uh, you want to see those people reacting to your to your work uh, at a rock venue. So um, we get there, and the opening act is playing, and it was this band, uh, Smash Mouth. I, no, it wasn't Smash Mouth because that's the All Star team. It was a Cowboy Mouth, like the Sam Shepard play. Uh, He's like, yeah, we're, we're cowboy mouth. We're from New Orleans. Want you guys to know we like to party down there. Next time there's Mardi Gras, you're all coming and crashing on my couch. Yeah. <laughs> it was like ridiculous rocker stuff. Super funny. I don't know if they were trying to be funny, but it was really funny. Um, so they go off like all rocked out. And then, you know, lights go down. Murmur, murmur, murmur. And then like the... Uh, the screen comes down and our thing comes on like the first frame of this and we use this scratch track because they're supposed to i don't know if they did this for the rest of the tour but they said they're going to play live we originally edited this to their smash song one week by bare naked ladies Uh, we originally cut it to that but uh, we delivered it with a different track i used this elvis costello track this elvis like cowboy spaghetti western uh elvis costello track to um deliver it on and they wound up using that i don't know if they i don't know if they paid royalties but um we want the uh, and so that comes up for the first show because they didn't have enough time to to come up with music to play for it um and like the crowd goes wild right you're seeing like you know and so it was actually like really fun and really cool to see this and see like you know this 10 days of labor um, really hard work. Everybody put a lot into it. And, you know, Machek, is, as I said, just a brilliant guy and did a fantastic job with this thing. Uh, it puts that up and everybody goes crazy. Then uh, two minutes later, the screen goes up and the band starts to play. And uh, Matt Slaughter looks at me. He's like, you want to get out of here? And I say, yes, I want to get out of here. Um, and I went, we went home and went to bed probably, but, um, perhaps maybe we got a drink or something, but, uh, it was an exhausting, uh, little over a week, but it was really fun to see people enjoying the work and having that experience. I wish Mashuk was able to go, but he had like daddy things to do. Um, and, um, so yeah, at the end of the video here, we, introduce the band in their uh, collage form and their uh, their mascot their album mascot brings them to life this is always an easy trick that we that we use here where it makes it seem like a story has happened where the whole film is in color and then there's this moment of magic the um, Wizard of Oz moment where it goes to color, reverse Wizard of Oz here. Um, even if nothing has actually happened to prompt that, it makes it seem like something has happened. It makes it seem like 
um, action has happened and there's been story development. So we, the magic of the guy brings the folks to from black and white to color, and then they start jamming on their musical instruments. Uh, all really simple, repeatable things. Uh, again, you know, cut out stuff. Uh, so I think this is pretty nice for cutout. One of the things that makes it work is how Machek does the lighting um, and the really limited multiplane. You know, he's not overdoing it with the multiplane, but it's there. So we do have like the flatness of the art plus a little depth plus some lighting. They're all really basic, simple things. Um, I also remember he thought that the album cover was really ugly, but maybe I shouldn't say that. It's really, he's an ugly, ugly guy. Um, so it wasn't the easiest thing in the world for him to work into that. And you can also see like some of the stuff is a little angled. You know, um, on, on uh, the camera's a little angled from that time to time, or the art is angled uh, to give it even a little bit more depth. Uh, so yeah, that's that Bare Naked Ladies concert opener. Um, Hope you hope you like this walk down memory lane for me. It uh, there's probably some more stuff in there that I'm forgetting, but uh, that's kind of how it goes. Sometimes you get these phone calls, and um, a week later you're in Madison Square Garden with a hundred thousand screaming Elvis fans. So that's the video for today. Thanks for making it all the way through. Please like, subscribe, do all of those things. And we couldn't get the Bare Naked Ladies to do our music, but we did even better. We got Ann Beale, who has done our theme music, and isn't she amazing? So go to our website and uh, give her give her all the appreciation she deserves. Thanks a lot, folks, and we'll see you next time.